Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This video, we're gonna talk about trigger control on the handgun. Trigger control on the handgun, um, the reason I say on the handgun is because the rifle has some other particulars that we'll get to in a future video. But I want to talk about the handgun. The handgun is one of the most consistently difficult platforms or weapons or whatever your terminology for it is to maintain a consistent degree of uh, accuracy with. Uh, reason for that can be uh, any number of things from attrition of skills because of lack of practice or because there are no demonstrable or observable uh, inconsistencies in order to correct yourself. And what I mean by that is you're shooting and you're not shooting as well as you want to and you can't figure out why because the things aren't as obvious as maybe they should be. One of the first places we look if we have an accuracy issue is generally the trigger. We feel like that trigger pull is the problem. The issue with that um, is in the fact of simple physiology. This finger versus everything else. And what I mean by that is, here's a list of all the muscles involved in your grip and your full presentation. And here's a list of all the muscle groups involved in your trigger press. You see the disparity there? The idea potentially is that this one little finger is going to overcome these two hands, wrists, arms, um, up here in the shoulders, back muscles, all these different factors that go into our t traditional two-handed or even one-handed presentation, but somehow this one little finger is going to not throw all that out of the window or overpower all those other muscle groups and make us shoot poorly. Um, the truth is this trigger finger can cause that, but only if you let it. And if you want to understand what I'm talking about, take this hand and take this hand and lock them together just like this right now and see which one wins the tug of war. Neither of them will, even though science and medicines tells us, or, or all things considered, one arm is generally stronger than the other. For guys, there's usually an obvious reason for that. Uh, but I have this tug of war going unless I give up, unless I consciously make the decision to break left or right, I can't win this tug of war with myself. I can't win an arm wrestling competition with myself because my body doesn't want to let me. Unless there's some kind of subconscious tick that is causing me to allow a smaller group of muscles to overcome a power, more powerful group of muscles. And that's where the trigger finger can play into inaccuracy and problems with our accuracy. Yes, it can outcome everything else or overcome everything else and cause us to drift the gun in a direction that we don't want it to go, but only if we let it. All right, so here we go. That's a stock Glock. Um, the only thing that's been done to it is, of course, aftermarket sights uh, undercut because that's a necessity for me. It's got an aftermarket barrel in it, but functionally, all the internals are stock on this gun. So the barrel is not going to help me pull the trigger better. I think everybody could agree with that. Neither is the light, neither are the sights. Uh, when we talk about trigger press, what we're talking about is pulling the trigger in line with the bore axis. We're not talking about pulling the trigger straight into the rear because that's the only way that the trigger goes. There's a lot of other experts out there, not just myself, that will say exactly that. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've heard that from someone else and I may have repeated it verbatim from the way they said it. Pulling it straight to the rear in axis with the bore. So finger placement is an issue, but remember that chart. Everybody's seen that chart, right? Where it shows you if your finger is here, this is why you're shooting that way. Well, that chart is bullshit. The reason that chart is bullshit is because it assumes that all guns are the same size in relation to the same size of hands. Can your finger drive the gun meaningfully in a direction other than the way that you want it to go? Yes, it can, but that goes back to winning a tug of war with yourself. If you let your finger drive the gun, it will in fact drive the gun. So some of you may be nodding your head, some of you may be shaking your heads, understandable. Where am I going with this? Where I'm going with this is finding a way to control the trigger in a meaningful way to prevent any kind of disturbance created from your one finger. A grip-based shooting. What do I mean by grip-based shooting? Grip-based shooting is controlling the gun from the grip but activating the gun with the trigger finger. So everything I do to provide accuracy comes from the grip, sight, pitch, or sight alignment. So my hands and my eyes are going to put the bullets where I want them to be. All, the only thing the finger does is drive well, it just it causes the gun to go off. But that is, to me, 
secondary to the act of providing knowledgeable point of aim, point of impact data and input from my grip and from my sight picture, sight alignment, or in the, you know, if I'm using an RDS, just, you know, uh, looking through my dot to my threat. So in that aspect, what I do with the trigger finger is not as important so long as it's done in a way that I do not subconsciously or consciously allow that finger to disrupt my grip, my sight picture, or my sight alignment. Of course, before we can get into all that, we need to talk about what the trigger press is. There are a couple different schools of thought when it comes to trigger press. The biggest uh, knowledge out there is, of course, we're kind of getting away from that whole trigger chart because I think everyone can agree that that's probably not as likely as it may have been before. If you think about it critically, that chart doesn't actually make sense. So placement on the trigger is going to be a personal issue. It should always be a personal issue. No two people are gonna put their finger in exactly the same place unless they're shooting the same gun and their, their hands are roughly the same size and they have roughly the same range of motion without any uh, existing conditions that prevent that range of motion. So finger placement is personal, I can't say to across the board everyone should put their finger in X place and on the pad or the you know the first distal flange or whatever so it's going to be an individual issue getting away from the individual issue advice that we can use from everyone uh, there is what's known as trigger reset trigger reset is I'm aimed in the gun fires trigger falls striker round whatever cycle of operation occurs the gun reciprocates and then I ride that trigger out as the sights settle I reacquire my sight picture I'm still holding slack and I break again that is trigger reset and there's been uh, for a long time trigger reset has been what has been taught to a large degree of shooters because they tell them that that prevents uh, that prevents you from uh, creating any meaningful disturbance in the trigger press to which I say uh, if you shoot that way and you don't disturb the trigger that's great but you can shoot other ways and not disturb the trigger as well uh, we're told not to slap the trigger which is entirely correct we do not want to slap the trigger but what is your definition of slap the trigger? So if I come out of the holster and I press out on target, I'm riding the frame right where my finger should be, right? And as I get on my sights and make that decision fire, my finger comes in and pulls the trigger. By definition, I have just slapped the trigger. If you look at the definition of slapping the trigger, a break in contact uh, before acute pressure to pull the trigger to the rear, I just slap the trigger. There's no way to avoid slapping the trigger. I don't consider that a slap the trigger. I consider that putting my finger on the trigger for the first time and breaking that first, sometimes maybe most important round I'm gonna fire, especially in, a, in an actual lethal force encounter. So is slapping the trigger bad? Well, I would say that any undue pressure you put on the trigger uh, that is unnecessary for the, the cycle and fire of the firearm is bad. But can you apply a great deal of pressure to the trigger that isn't bad? And would that be considered slapping the trigger? So for me, Slapping the trigger is any undue energy delivered to the trigger surface or the trigger shoe, which is excess to what's actually needed to actually fire the firearm. Uh, anything besides that is not slapping the trigger. Um, and a method that I use, and a method that a lot of people use, although they may call it something different, instead of trigger reset, I do trigger reset anticipation. So the idea of reset again. Uh, I'm aimed in, I shoot, the gun cycles. As the gun goes back in the battery and recoil dissipates and I get my sights back, I let that trigger out, I lock it, I fire it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with shooting that way. If I'm shooting for, for extreme precision, I might actually use that technique. Uh, but if I'm shooting for speed, I'm actually going to retard, correct use of that word, the ability of the gun to, the ability of the trigger rather, to reset at its maximum speed by riding the trigger. So what I'm doing is slowing the gun down. No matter how fast I ride that reset, I'm riding the trigger out, which means I'm not letting the spring tension reset at its maximum ability. In order to do that, I have to remove my finger from the trigger. I know, hold on. Remove my finger from the trigger and put it at a place where the trigger is going to naturally reset to. Is that gonna save me a lot of time? Well, here's kind of a demonstration. Again, I am not the fastest shooter in the world. I'll be the first person to tell you that, but here's what that shooting looks like for me. Here is trigger reset. I'm shooting as fast as I can with trigger reset. And here I am shooting at trigger reset anticipation. Again, underscoring, I'm not the fastest shooter in the world, but I think anyone can see that there are clear difference in the techniques. The gain in speed is 
fractions of a second, literally fractions of a second, however the gain of speed is there. So if my goal is to shoot someone as many times as I can, as fast as I can, to get them to stop doing whatever caused me to shoot them in the first place, if I'm in a distance where I feel like I can be on the gas, quote unquote, that fast, then I would want to shoot that way. And there's some pretty decent uh, anecdotal information out there that says you're going to shoot that way anyway in a lethal force encounter. Again, I can't verify that across the board, but I know from people that I've talked to that did you, did you ride a reset? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't think so. You see guys that shoot on video, and there's factors that go into that as well, and that's not. we're not going to go down that road too much. But getting back to the technique, trigger reset versus reset anticipation. What is trigger reset anticipation? So here is one-handed, just so you can get a clear, unobstructed view of the trigger. Here is trigger reset. Now, as you can see in the gun cycles, the finger rides the trigger all the way out. A reset occurs, no undo slack is released, and then the finger presses straight back in. Minimal disturbance on the trigger itself, on the trigger body. So we've got that good pressure, consistent pressure, equal pressure straight into the rear. Uh, now, what is reset anticipation? Well, reset anticipation is as the trigger breaks uh, and the, the striker or the hammer falls or whatever your operating system is, the finger re releases itself from the surface of the trigger shoe and it moves out to where the trigger is going to reset to. Now, this is going to be firearm dependent, obviously. Uh, but if you spend a lot of time practicing with your carry gun, then you should already have a subconscious knowledge, a proprioception, an extended proprioception, if you will, understanding of where that trigger naturally resets to anyway, because it's the same exact place where your finger stops on trigger reset. So all I'm doing is removing my finger from the surface of the trigger, allowing the trigger to come back to my finger and allowing me to press the shot. Does that create any undue disturbance in the cycle or actually the accuracy of the shooting itself? Well, of course, that's going to be a point of contention, and it's going to be a very personal issue. Now, we've already seen, just using myself as evidence, that I shoot faster doing trigger reset anticipation than I do doing trigger reset. By some people's definition, trigger reset anticipation is slapping the trigger. Um, and I submit to you this. If I were to put a gun in a vice and get it aimed and vice it down to where the, the, the only thing that can move on that gun at that point is the slide. The slide will be able to reciprocate. Everything else is locked down. And then I were to beat that hammer, or I should say beat that trigger with a chisel and a hammer to get the gun to fire, it would still shoot a great group because all movement has been isolated. The only thing that is creating external disturbance on the gun is the trigger press itself. Now think about that vice as your grip. Again, you will not be able to provide the same degree of support to a firearm as a vice can. I get that. However, you will be able to provide a much more stable shooting platform than maybe you think. Remember that tug of war. If that finger is creating noticeable uh, errors in your shooting, it's because somehow you are letting that happen. There's something going on in your grip where you're not applying enough pressure to the right place, and it's letting that finger just beat the fucking gun all over the place. And that's something that we have to uh, work out in, in practice and repetition and proper grip techniques. So just as some anecdotal evidence, um, I'm going to go ahead and shoot two 10-round groups. And one of them is going to be trigger reset, and one of them is going to be reset anticipation. I'm going to try to fire them at roughly the same speed so we can do a big reveal at the end. So you can see the actual uh, consequences or, or evidence of the both techniques fired, how well they shot, how well they grouped, because I've already been saying it's more about your grip than it is about your finger, so I need to be able to double down and prove that, right? So here's the true groups. Now, of course, the big question is, which one is which, right? Which one is reset anticipation, and which one is writing reset? Well, look at that. 
Was there a difference between the two groups? Of course there was, because there are two different groups of ammunition fired. There's always going to be some kind of inconsistencies between the shooting, even though, uh, depending on how specific you want to get. If we started measuring things down to the fraction of the inch, of course they're not going to be the exact same group. But was there a meaningful difference between the two groups based on the distance and conditions I fired them under? No. Uh, reason being, my grip has been retrained to appreciate that trigger reset anticipation. So if my grip is solid enough to allow me to shoot with my finger leaving the surface of the trigger, and the only reason I'm doing that is to allow for maximum speed if maximum speed is needed. Uh, and of course there are some arguments based on certain guns that if I, if I do shoot trigger reset, then part of my finger may be dragging on the, uh, the trigger well of the gun itself, causing an inconsistency of its own. Uh, but writing, there's nothing wrong with shooting with trigger reset, but you should be resetting the trigger as fast as your sights settle. So if your sights have settled and you have already acquired your new sight pitch or sight alignment and you haven't pressed yet and there's no reason outside of re trigger reset that you haven't pressed that, that next round yet, then you're not shooting as fast as you can see. And ultimately that's what we want to be able to do, right? Is we want to be able to shoot as fast as we're able to see and able to reacquire our sights. So is trigger reset slowing down your ability to deliver rounds on target? The answer is probably yes. If you've been shooting for a few years and you've been spending a lot of time and you've taken classes and done a lot of practice and you've got thousands of rounds down range, but you're still using trigger reset, the answer may be yes. Is there a place for trigger reset? I kind of already talked about it. I use trigger reset or I should say riding the trigger through the entire cycle of fire for very precise, very distance-based shooting because it minimizes every possible disturbance on the gun. But it's kind of like thinking how we shoot a rifle at close ranges versus how we would shoot a rifle at 300 meters. There are going to be different techniques. No one is going to run their CQB speed drill and try to hit 10-inch steel at 300 meters. So why can't we have the same school of thought when it comes to the handgun? You can use two different techniques based on the situation. Trigger reset anticipation allows me to run the gun as fast as my sights reset. Whereas trigger reset allows me to shoot more precisely and minimizes all possible disturbance on the gun. I do understand where I talked about in the beginning of the video where this little finger is not going to overcome in any meaningful way everything else that's going on in our grip and our shooting position. But I want to stack the odds in my favor, especially if I have to take a 25, 35, 45, 55 meter shot with a handgun. So the purpose of this video was to show you that if you are using trigger reset, then maybe there's a way, and you're frustrated with it, maybe there's a way that you can shoot faster. And maybe it gets you thinking about the fact that if you are shooting consistently uh, inconsistent, so if your point of aim is here and you're hitting here, but consistently in a group, it might be your trigger finger, or it might be something in your grip that you're allowing to happen subconsciously. You're, you're, you're somehow winning that tug of war with yourself and you don't even realize it. So you kind of got to retrain the way that you apply the finger to the trigger and work the grip around that. Grip-based shooting is going to benefit you much more, uh, I should say, on a wider degree of possible shooting situations than constantly worrying about just that minute finger movement and then the grip kind of falls in a line behind that. And I hope that makes sense. but. It goes back to the vice. Let's make our grip as vice-like as possible, and then whatever we do to the trigger shouldn't affect in any meaningful way our point of aim, point of impact. And by doing that, we're able to shoot the gun even faster. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.